Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. A very warm welcome to all of you. Every day, Sikh, non-Sikhs, Punjabis, non-Punjabis, you know, sometimes we reduce this. People have the desire to be with the wisdom with capital W. In this case, embodied through Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib. And we want that, but we are distracted. And sometimes we get clarities in those distractions. And when we do have the clarity, we must seize that. We must not remain distracted. We must become focused. We must proclaim what the Guru did. And when the time comes, when the Delhi was so unkind to the Sikhs, including to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, even then there was enough clarity that everything can be given in the name of the Guru, as did, you know, one picked up the head of the Guru because the head always belongs to the Guru. State cannot take it. Head has your thought and head has this submission to the one. So one Sikh had the clarity and we will today call the guts, the love, no fear, enthusiasm, all these things which we've been talking about, that he picked up the head of the Guru and took it to Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj in Anandpur Sahib. And another one said, my house is totally worth to be used to do the last rites of the Guru which state is not allowing. That's the clarity. We all want this clarity. I deeply believe this. Everyone wants it, regardless of our labels and how we look, we do. And when that comes, there comes a moment when there is no calculation. That's where the love toward the Guru comes in. And we see this in the life of the Guru Tegh Bahadur in certain sense. In order to understand uh, the ideology te te teachings of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, uh, we need to also realize that before him there have been eight gurus. Adi Granth has been compiled. There have been uh, a, a movement that has been uh, going on for years together. So how do we understand what Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib is offering to us? So in order to understand that we have to return to the historical texts, authentic historical texts and also those who were written uh, during the Guru periods and uh, very close to the Guru period. For this, I delved into reading uh, uh, Pai Santok Singh, Kavi Senapati, also Ratan Singh Bangu, Pai Nand Lal, and so on and so forth, many of them. And slowly and gradually, we'll be reading into them. All the gurus, uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib is also, you know, stereotyped a lot in certain ways. Mostly, you know, he's shown as a recluse uh, uh, since not much information is available regarding his uh, life uh, or his stay during uh, those 20 years in Bakala before he became the guru. Uh, so, this stereotype is further, you know, hardened by the way his revealed Bani is, you know, seen and interpreted, uh, which has a certain slant people think. So I thought it might be a good idea to you know look at the Guru's engagement uh, at you know, different levels and show how you know infinitely dynamic the Guru personality is and you know how active and diplomatically engaged uh, he was as a you know the leader of the community. You know no matter what the circumstances, uh, his response uh, to uh, you know different situations uh, was essentially based on the universal divine principle. Of in many ways, death, just like this Guru Sahib says, that inspires life. And the inspiration and lessons we get from the, the uh, from the moments of death really do bring life onto us. And in, in that may well also be presented in the Mahala Noma Bani. Growing up, I feel like I heard a lot of people be saying that it was a little bit too morbid or like depressing. Um, and of course, like with the parents I have who who have been kind of had like a good relationship with death. My mom was always like, I think it's so beautiful. And I was like, why is it that some people feel the exact opposite? <laughs> and why is it that some people think it's so morbid? And I think something that I, I will discuss in my presentation and probably in the Q&A as well is like the gentleness of that body that has now come across after having worked with it with a team on the Guru Granth Sahib project. Um, the like loving way that the Guru speaks to us and and understands our condition and um i think sometimes we read that nuance out of things because it's easier to be hard on ourselves about where we are in our journeys um 
And so, yeah, if I can get one thing across before, even before the presentation starts, it's that the biggest shift for me in understanding this body has been with the like tone and the gentleness and the kind of forgiveness um, that that kind of permeates the whole thing and how, how life-changing that is um, for me. And I hope it will be for other people as well. And the quality for liberation, the quality for looking for, at death and for being a warrior is courage. We all, uh, that's, a, that's a quality that we all should ask for blessings from our group for courage so we can remain detached while we live in this world, while we get ready to face death, and while we want ourselves and humanity to be liberated. And I think that really brought something. It was good to hear your uh, in-depth discussions about that because it allowed me to get a better understanding and I hope the audience a better understanding how we can bring this into our lives as well. The Guru instructs the mind is that remember the now incessantly remember the Naam, for that will bring freedom. Jate hot udhar. So in the first Shabbat, the last line was, the life objective is realized. In the second one, it is, this will bring freedom. So let's, you know, build on that to see where this is going. And in this third Shabbat, the Guru addresses us us the people you and i and the guru articulates that he has seen that this love in this world is deceptive jagat mein dek juti dekhi preet i've seen that and you know we can think about it the question arises what love is the guru referring to and if we look at the earlier two shabads and in this one it is the love that is emanating from these closest relationships because everyone in these close relationships is really after their own comfort because you're here i want to have this relationship with you because you're providing me something you're making my life comfortable you're giving me something that's that attachment that guru is talking about if i could love you just because i love you if i could love you just that it would not be but without that expectation that you're going to provide me with something that is the love which we is talking about that's why the, everyone's consciousness is constantly bound in that mind what can i get from him that's that bondage that is creating and then and the guru says in the last breath none of these are going to be with you but look at this, the Guru is saying, is telling us, this is the astonishing norm, societal norm of society, of, of the way this life is. And yet, the mind, the ignorant mind doesn't understand this. What if we, if the trained mind could understand this? So in the last line of the Shabbat, the Guru declares the one who sings the divine song this will free will freeze oneself which means they're no longer bound to this attachment no longer are they beholden and they cross the world ocean we've talked a lot about remembrance what takes us away from the guru what brings us closer to the guru how did the guru live that in his own life in being away from the family away from his community and then being a leader around South Asia for the community and for his family. For myself, that transformation of consciousness is what I was looking for during this event. And at the end of this day, I can honestly say I won't be trans transformed, but the pathway and the guides that uh, were mentioned earlier today on that transformation of consciousness. It's so hard because we look at the material world in front of us all the time. God and Akal Purakh is zara zara, pal pal. And for us to recognize that essence in zara zara, pal pal, we need a guide and a path mm -hmm. to be away from the worldly and into that zara zara and pal pal of the stream of consciousness of Akal Purakh. 
And what I heard today allows me to come closer, hopefully allow others to come closer to that as well. My definition of success of an event like this for me is, are some of my questions that I came to this event with, were they answered? Good. But most importantly, were there certain questions raised that I hadn't even considered? That's where the growth is going to come from. And oh boy. And that's what I find that, uh, especially with Guru Tegh Brothers, every time I reflect on the Barney, there's a new level. It's like the, you know, like they say, the layers of the onion, the next level gets revealed. And I find that uh, just in the last concept, you know, last conversation you had with any talking about Virag and going from Birhat to Virag. Um, such a beautiful concept, such a powerful concept. And, and Guru Tegh Brothers, he, his entire life in his Barney is a demonstration of freedom through submission, which sounds counterintuitive, but every act was that. Uh, he was free in every realm uh, by submitting to Ekman God. Thanks to technology, we are here together to celebrate this unique historical milestone. The speakers and the audiences are across many time zones, making this indeed a global celebration. Thank you to one and for all for taking time to be here. After the conference, I hope that you will continue to engage with Sikri content and become part of the Sikri family, either as a volunteer or a financial supporter. Vaigruji ka khalsa, Vaigruji ki fatah.